back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, I say welcome. It's good to have you in my space. If you're a returning subscriber, I say welcome back to the family. Today I shall be making a nutrient packed vegetable soup. Nigerian vegetable soup. The detailed list of the ingredients to make this delicious Nigerian vegetable soup will be in the description box below. Keep watching. Stock fish head. This right here gives every Nigerian soup that we use in eating swallow, what we call swallow, it gives it a burst of tasty flavors. So this is going to take the taste of this vegetable soup to a good level. Goat meat, cow tripe, dried fish, cooked cow skin, red bell peppers, onions, and habanero peppers. This pepper is very spicy and very, very tasty. And it's a, it's a very good addition to this vegetable soup. Ground crayfish, ground bonga fish, or ground dried herring fish. Palm oil, seasoning cube, and my preferred pink salt. This is a star of the soup. This is called water leaves. I've had this for a couple of days in the house, so it looks a bit uh, dried, which is good because it's a vegetable that is uh, water filled. So the longer it stays before you use it, the drier the vegetable is and the less moisture it will add to the soup. This is the fresh water leaves. I just harvested this one from my garden five minutes ago. So this is what the fresh one looks like. So this right here has been here, has been in the house, not in the fridge. It has been in the house room temperature for a couple of days. So that's why the it looks a bit wilted. The second vegetable for this vegetable soup is kale. I harvested this kale from my, from my garden a few weeks ago. If you watch my previous video on harvesting and preserving kale, you will watch how I how I prepared this. It's already washed and it's frozen. So I'll pour hot water on the stuffed fish head and let it soak in the hot water for 10 minutes. Then I'll put it in the pot with the meat and then cook it to soften it. So seasoning added, this is already previously cooked, that is this uh, cow tripe, that is why I'm not adding it here. I don't like the stock of tri tripe, I don't use it to cook. So whenever I want to use tripe to cook, I season it with onions and uh, salt and whatever seasoning I want to add to it. I cook it and I decant the water, I don't add the water to my cooking. You could use the water of tripe if it works for you, I don't like it. I have also previously cooked this cow skin with water and salt, water, salt and onions. So that also, um, the water is also decanted. I don't, I won't add the water here. So that is why these two are not here. So now I add my hot water. Just to, you know, just to bring it to the level of the stockfish. So I add some more. I'll season with salt, with a little salt because the stuffed fish is salted and I also washed it with salt. So I add um, a little salt. I cover and I put on the stove to boil. This is the dry fish, duly cleaned. This is the bones that, you know, the discarded waste that came out of the clean fish. So I put this away. I have also, you know, I've also cut up the, the cow skin. Like I said, the cow skin is soft enough, so I'll add it at the right time. I also cut up, <laughs> I've also cut up the onions and the red, red bell peppers. You know, these are the, the hot peppers. So I'll quickly blend them and then put it in the pots 
to, to fry. This is the second onion that I brought I'm going to use to, to fry this before I add it to the soup. Keep watching! <laughs> So this is 30 minutes after. Let's see how soft the meat and the stock fish. Yeah, everything has softened. You can see the, the stock fish has practically the stock fish head has practically dissolved in the stock. Let's see the let's see the meat. The meat is the meat is soft enough. So And the stock too has boiled down you know in vegetable soup you don't need too much water in your vegetable soup so that it will don't go you know it won't be too watery so this stock level should be fine for the quantity of vegetable i want to cook so i'll take off this from the stove top with this pot i'm going to so i add the palm oil So guys, I, I had to add more oil because I consider the oil I have here for the quantity of pepper I have to fry, it's a bit small. So I add one more cooking spoon of oil. Friends, um, this oil is not supposed to bleach. I'm not bleaching it. I just want it to heat up a little bit. So I'll let the onion saute for like five to seven minutes. So it's been seven minutes. I started frying the onion. So I'll add some bit of the crayfish to just, you know, give it a kick of flavor. You know, it has a way of combining so well with the onions. And I let it fry for Two more minutes. So time for me to add the blended red bell peppers. So I stir to combine the, the blended peppers and the oil. This is going to be a lot of splatter so I add my split guard to reduce the splatter level. Peppers. So it's been 13 minutes. This pepper started frying. Wow! The aroma in this kitchen is everything, guys. <laughs> wow! The crayfish and the onion frying together is such a pleasant aroma. So I let it fry for two more minutes. Yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. So, so this is ready. So at this time, I add the tripe. It's fully cooked. I add the fish. And I add the cow skin. It's time to to add the pepper. You know that dry fish is um is fully cooked. You just for it to boil some and add some flavor to the soup. But as as is, it's fully cooked. With the little water that is in this pot, everything should um, get to boiling nicely. So this is water leaf. Because the water leaf is wilted, 
I'm not going to rewash it. If it was the day I harvested it, when it was still very, very um, robust, <laughs> so you know, the moisture is usually like the name goes, is a leaf that has so much water. But because this one had stayed in the house under room temperature for a couple of days, it has withheld nicely and the moisture level has drastically come down. I'll cut up the, the frozen kale. If you, if you didn't know how I got to this, <laughs> to this point, watch my video on harvesting and preservation of kale. So that was where I showed the detail. I showed in details how I got this um, kale frozen. And you can see it is still very green. There is no freezer bone. If you do not follow a good process, by the time you put it in the freezer, you will have freezer bone. This has been in the in the freezer for for like two months. And it's still as though I just harvested it. You guys can see the water <laughs> so, so at this time this is the ground herring or ground the bonga fish so i add that it gives a very wonderful aroma and flavor to this soup this is the crayfish the remaining crayfish so at this time it's time to add the to add the water leaves So I'll cover it to steam for some minutes, then I'll stir before adding the before adding the kale. Keep watching. So I want the water leaves to release all of the little moisture it has you can see <laughs> everything has combined so good so it's time to add the kale wow the aroma here is everything <laughs> so this is our kale Because it is frozen, you know, it will have to come to room temperature first before the cooking starts. I taste for salt. I can see birds flying. Perfect. So I'll cover it and let it steam for three I minutes. See children smiling. And that will be that will be it. When I think about all of the things that you and me could be